though Indiana had a down year last year, overall it's nationally recognized as one of the better college basketball teams in the nation. And they pretty much have a pretty loyal fan base throughout the nation. And it's going to keep growing and everyone's going to stay fans as long as we keep winning. So the main thing right now is for Tom Crean and the team to mostly win at home. Prior to arriving at Indiana, what were your perceptions of IU basketball? And since coaching here, have those perceptions changed? Well, my perceptions were, were great because of just the way people feel about Indiana. I mean, the camaraderie of the fans, the intimidation of, the, of Assembly Hall, and what it was like as a, an opposing coach with an opposing team to come in here. Uh, and really just the way people felt about basketball in general here. And they were already high, but they've, but they've gained a lot of steam, especially after the year that we had last year with everything that we had to deal with. Our fans continue to be behind this, and our students continue to be behind this in such a big way. And I think it's going to continue to even grow. So my perceptions are high, uh, getting higher, and, and uh, I don't see them leveling off anytime soon. What do you feel are the necessary components to restoring the IU program on and off the IU basketball court? Well, I think it's building on the tradition. I think there's no question that it's the fan base here. When, you, when you've got a program that has been 45% uh, capacity driven by students, that's a huge number. There's no number that's even close in college basketball. I think we've got to get that back, and then we've got to keep that moving forward. Uh, the energy of the building, I think, is going to be huge. And just uh, everybody understand that we're trying to get guys with, with, with high moral fiber, you know, with character, guys that, that are tough and ornery and nasty on the court, but that are good people, hardworking students, and uh, socially aware and socially responsible off the court. You know, people that they look forward to watching play, but they also look forward to having in their classes. And I think it's important that we continue to show uh, the country what this fan base is like, what this program is like, so that we can continue to go uh, in Indiana and around the country to recruit, you know, very talented players. Indiana soccer is also nationally recognized as one of the powerhouses in the nation, having won seven national championships, although the last one they won was in 2004, so it's a bit of a drought. But... I feel if they schedule more home games and keep up winning, especially at home too, it's going to encourage more fans to go to the games, pick up in attendance, and get a nice strong fan base. What were the changes that were made when you went from player to coach at IU? Well, I'm very fortunate. I, one of the best decisions I've made in my life was to come to IU and play soccer here. Uh, and quite honestly, when I came here, I knew nothing about Indiana soccer. In fact, Indiana soccer wasn't on the map. Um, I was very fortunate to play my freshman year with a bunch of talented guys and the only game we lost was the NCAA final and that's kind of the year 1976 we put IU soccer on the map and ever since then we're able to recruit better players than, than me uh, and, and uh, continue to grow it and you know while I was here my goal one of the things I, I did while I was here besides playing soccer and going to class I studied the program studied Coach Agley uh, one of my goals was to hopefully someday be the coach here. Uh, unfortunately, that worked out. Uh, you know, I'm the I'm the lucky caretaker of this program, and uh, you know, one of the things it was a long process. You know, I went from a player, went to the pros a little bit. Uh, injury cut that short, and then you wanted to get into coaching. And Coach Agley gave me the opportunity as an undergrad assistant, and did that, then continued to grow as a coach and. Um, left IU for a while as a director of coaching for the Colorado State Youth Soccer Association and then came back as a full-time assistant in 93. Uh, been back ever since and took over as head coach in 2004 and fortunately we won our national championship that year in 2004 and um, you know my, my goal is to continue the tradition of excellence and even add to the tradition of excellence that's, that has been IU soccer. How do you, as coach, feel we can attract a larger fan base for IU soccer in the future? Well, it, it, the first and foremost is to win. When you win, people like winners, and they'll come out and follow a winner. So uh, to win games, uh, I think it's also uh, a commitment or uh, obligation for me as a coach to try to play attractive soccer. Uh, first and foremost, we want to play effective soccer, and uh, that's you know to win games and win championships but we also I think it's the you know I have an idea what I think the way the game should be played in attractive a fashion uh, and we try I'll try to uh, we try to do that but it, first and foremost when we want to be effective.